What's up, honey love? What's up, girl? What's up, love, honey love? I see you. What you doing, real Sonia? What's up, Sonia? Fat fat mama Sonia. What's up, fat fat mama Sonia? What's up, fat fat mama Sonia? What's up, Mayday? Lord Mayday. What's up, boy? What's up, Lord Mayday? What's up, my boy Doc? What's it, Doc? Hmm? What's it, Doc? What you say, Doc? It's my big boy, Doc. What you say? All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to another week of Game Dog Talk. Back in the building with schoolboy, Mr. Richard Garcia. How you doing today? I'm doing good, thanks. How you doing? Uh, real good, real good. Just chilling. You know, cool. I'll be looking forward to these these Game Dog Talks, man, because fucking yeah. boxing, boxing suck right now. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll be looking forward yeah. to talking to these dogs. Man. Yeah, yeah. Let me see here. Let me scroll up and uh, do a roll call. Paris Jackson in the building. Salute. Uh, Vernon Stone. Salute. Miami Snoopy 305. What's up, man? We got Schoolboy left a comment in there. We got uh, Mike Lee. Salute. Bert in the building. What's happening, man? Hey, Mike. How you doing, Mike? We got uh, <laughs> City Boy Kennel. Salute. Live Life Real. What's up, bro? Uh, Fat Farm Ray. We got um, AJ up in here. Hardy Boys, Pennsylvania. Make sure y'all smash the like button as y'all enter the building, man. Big, what's happening, man? We got uh, Mark Wonderlunch in here. DBK Bulldog, salute. Gullery Kennels. Um, Demario, salute. Valley Boy Kennels, salute. Welcome down, Ram. Big Stepping, what's up, man? Let's see here. Hey, Ram. Let's see. Daryl Smith. Uh, yeah, yeah. We checked out. I checked out uh Pat Patrick interview. I checked it's like four parts. I watched all of them. Yeah, most of them from good interviews. Yeah. Uh. Dan G. Von C. Right. Black Ice. Salute. Salute. All right. Salute to everybody in the building. Right. So how you been, uh, Mr. Garcia? What been up to? Been doing good. Just writing and doing my thing. Dog thing, you know, on, on Facebook. Facebook no, kind of no. old. Do, do people do other stuff? Uh. A lot of people on Instagram and stuff now, and you know they on Instagram a lot. Yeah, you know? I don't, I don't know how to do none of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just figured out Instagram. Uh, I think late last year. Yeah, I think my grandkids know all that stuff. I don't know shit. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um. But yeah, Facebook is pretty much where you can go to find all the old schools, the OGs. Man, you can go find them on Facebook. You know, because you know they're not gonna be on Instagram and shit. Yeah. No. We we're we're still learning how to use Facebook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me see here. Let's see here. All right, so let's uh, we can start off with the first question because I think the first question is for you anyway. Um, somebody asked a question. It says, "Question for schoolboy: What were the attributes of Big Red?" Mm. Yeah, his uh, his attributes were were uh, he was real intense. You know, real smart, not not smart in the sense fancy dancy, but just he understood why he was in that box. You know, I could I could I could put him in there with nothing across and he'd face him up and he'd just start screaming. He was so I rolled him so much and he was so accustomed to it that, you know, outside the box, he, he wasn't really that way. You know, right. he, he could he could almost run loose in the yard. He wouldn't he wouldn't bite bitches that, that he was trying to breed to turn on him and bite him, you know. Uh, he wouldn't mess with pups, but once I put him in there, he 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 would go crazy. He would start screaming even with an empty corner across from him. But right. he was a he was a shoulder and stifled dog, real strong, you know. Uh, he he'd aim his shot. Usually usually when you cut him loose, he'd be looking at that shoulder. It was always the same shoulder, the the left shoulder. Right. He hit it and 
pop, you know. He'd go to that first. Uh, on his back, he would he would work the bottom jaw and the chest, you know, mm-hmm. and he would he would hit the stifles. He didn't he right. didn't throw a lot of stifle dogs. That's that's what I wanted to get out of him sometimes, but he didn't he one or two here and there, but not a lot, you know. But he was right. good at it, you know. He got that from his sire, Rowdy. His sire was a real hard biting stifle dog. He had a good mouth, you know, game and a you know real good producer. That's really where he shined as a producer, you know. Right, right. What was his? What was his? For, for the people who don't know, what was his uh, makeup? What was he bred like? He was on the top. Was inbred uh, Jeep Miss Rage. So it's it's a Jeep Bully Sun Cross. His mm-hmm. his sire was brother sister bred off of uh, uh, two dogs out of Jeep Miss Rage, and then his bottom side was was inbred Red Boy. So he was like a three way cross. I had him and his sister. I won with both of them. And then he lost game. Uh, my partner did him the second time, and he lost real game an hour and a half. And then uh, uh, I won with his sister over Smith and Walton, the same guys that had Badger and Bad Billy. Right. And, and uh, uh, you know, uh, then I took that and bred it, bred him to some couple of Jeep inbred Jeep bitches, and then I his. His uh, sister, I bred her to Champion Ninja, and uh, twice that was a repeat breeding, and then to her nephew, uh, Champion Bill, one time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You still see some of that blood around too. Yeah, it's there. There's there's some people that that have it. It, it wasn't a lot because, you know, they bred them a lot more after I sold him, but for me, you know, I didn't breed a lot of dogs. But there's there's still some. My buddy has it. Has it? Uh, he's had it for over twenty-five years. You know, he's still going strong with it. Right. Uh-huh. Yes, indeed. All right. Let's see here. So the next question here. Wait a minute. Let me see what the chat's saying. Yeah. Let me see here. Texas. I have a ten-month-old female that loves to run and swim, but when it comes to using her mouth. She won't do anything. <laughs> Says, uh, okay. I've changed uh, textures and still nothing. Um, any help is greatly appreciated. Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, you know, that, that's funny because another guy just did the same thing. You know, I basically told him just to, just to, uh, you know, you you can try a flirt pole. You can you can even use food. You know, set it off to a at a distance and kind of like scratch her to it or let her, let her go for it. You know, you use, uh, uh, you know, you can try different texture. It's just a matter with mess of messing with them, you know, just repeat it over and over, encourage them when they, sometimes they, you know, some dogs won't even, they won't work their mouth. You know, they just refuse to, they just won't do it, but you just got to keep repeating over and over again, encourage her to grab it, you know, and yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, it's just a, a matter of repeating it over and over again, you know. Right. You could, usually a hide they'll grab because it smells like an animal, you know. You might try and do that. Uh, but but it's just a matter of, of doing it over and over. It, it's up to them, really. They either want to do it or they don't, you know. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter if they don't, you know. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Right, right. <clears throat> okay, uh, another question is uh, getting what you want versus uh, what you need. Uh, getting high, strong dogs you might uh, not have time for or don't fit your program. I think, uh, did you see that comment the guy left in the, under the video or under the, yeah. the chat? Actually, yeah, yeah. That? Yeah, I think I did. I, I don't know if I responded back then. Uh, or when it was written, but you know, it, it's more, it's more of, you know, you, you get what you need, you know, that's what you try and look for. And what you want is, is what you need. You know, it's not really a versus kind of thing. You know, it's all a matter of, you know, if you're talking about breeding dogs, you're trying to get dogs that have either had the same traits your dogs have, or they have something that you want to add to it, you know, 
And with high strung dogs, a lot of times they're hard keepers. You know, they can be destructive or they can they can uh, uh, not settle down. You know, they'll run their chain all day, which is OK, except if it's real hot. You know, sometimes they'll, they'll get heat stroke. So you want to try and keep them in the shade all the time. Water their area. That's what I used to do, you know, go out there two or three times a day during the summertime and water their area because they'll, they'll, some of them can kill themselves just running, you know. But, right. But you know, as far as breeding goes, you're, that's what you're trying to do is either maintain the traits you have or you want to add something, you know. There was another thing about, you know, adding outcrosses and all that. You don't, you don't have to wait till you lack something to out, add an outcross, you know. And if you want to, you want to add an outcross or you see something you like, you know, and you want to add it, don't, don't wait till you're lacking something or till something goes south. Just put it in there anyways. You know, you, you don't have to wait till it's down the road or when you think you need it, you know, and that's basically with, with anything. Don't wait till you think you need it or, or till you're lacking something. If it's something you want to add anyways, add it. If it's something that you see you like, you know, and, and you want to add it to your family of dogs, do that, you know. Right, right. Uh, Vic in the, in the chat had a good suggestion for the last um, question. He says, they putting the dog by a dog. I think he's telling the guy to try putting the dog by another dog that works spring pole. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, he might he might uh, try to become a copycat or something. You know, he might get energized by that. Yeah, that could that could work too. You could you could even try a tug of war thing. You know, I used to do that with my dogs. You could you give one dog, you know, the the what uh, the rope. I used to use like old pair of Levi's. You know, tie them together. Right. Put it put the two dogs next to each other, and you can take the 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 bait you're using. You know, and you play tug of war with the dog. And then at some point you can reach over and give it to the other dog, see if they'll grab it. You know, that's a good point. I forgot about that. That that's something you can try. Get them to do tug of war between their spots. You know, and uh, that sometimes that, that yeah, copycat like that, or do because the other one's doing it, or or they might get jealous because you're giving that other dog all the attention, so they see it as you know, if I do it, I'll get that attention too. You know, right, right. Yeah, that's a good point. Interesting question here. Um, Champion the Brat says, uh, Mr. Garcia, why is the current ROM list so widely accepted when there were better producing dogs out at the same time? It says, uh, my mag, my friends, uh, their dogs, right? Yeah, uh, that that's a good that's a good point because due to the nature of the atmosphere now. You know, you, you, there's there's no way of telling who, who's ROM really unless you know the people. Nobody's keeping track, and whoever's keeping track, it's going to be hard for them to get accurate, honest information. Oh, well, facts. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and uh, I I don't you know I I I advise people this: don't put like everything into the ROM list or the POR list. It's important. It matters. But but the whole reason wasn't to to display or show the quality of a dog. All it's for is to give credit to a dog for some accomplishment. That's it. Doesn't matter. It you know doesn't mean that it's a good dog. Doesn't mean that it's a bad dog. It doesn't mean that those numbers matter because you can make ROM in one breeding and it can take you a hundred breedings to make it. But currently, you know, I. I you know, there's so many mistakes on Facebook, even dogs of the past saying this dog's a champion, grand champion, this time winner and that time winner. They're not. I know them dogs. Some of them I've seen. They're right. good dogs. You know, they're, they're good dogs on their own. Sometimes they won one. Sometimes they won two. But they didn't make champion. They didn't make grand champion. And some of them, they are five time winners, but they lost also. So they're not a grand champion anymore. You know. But keeping up the records and all that, no, nobody can do it accurately. Not without getting in trouble. I'm telling you, it's right. the best to, to, you know, if you keep your own records, you know, someone out of the country, like people out of the country, I know that's what they do. They keep their own records. So those are accurate. You know, they're, they're, it's legal where they, the sport's legal where they're at, or it's, at least it's not illegal. 
you know, and they keep their own private records and, and that's fine, you know, but as far as any magazine or any entity or any Facebook, anything having accurate records, I don't think it's possible. You're just going on somebody's word, you know, and that, that there, there's no way to fact check it, you know, right? because at least back in the day, you know, they still lied and cheated and all that stuff. But, you know, with the Sporting Dog Journal, if it came out in Dog's Champion and, and it wasn't, then people would get checked, you know. And right. then Kelly would take them off the list. They'd take their dog off the list. He wouldn't let them report nothing no more. There was a lot of people that lied. One guy, he, he never lost. And he lived about 15. <laughs> he, he never lost. And, and the, the people he would go into, they would be like Jay Burton, R. Mayfield, you know. Right. B. Car B. Carver and stuff. He used famous people's names, but they weren't, right. you know, they weren't real people. But he mm -hmm. never lost. He lived about 15 minutes from us. And uh, we finally got a hold of Kelly and said, this guy, you know, he only got like three dogs and he don't do nothing. So he just outed him from the from the magazine, wouldn't allow him to report nothing. But he got away with it for a long time, you know. And uh, uh, you'll even see if you get the old Sporting Dog Journal champion, Book of Champions, some of his are in there because they were already printed, right? But after that, on the list, that his dogs aren't on the list anymore because they were all deleted, you know. Man, it sounds today, like some shit a dog man right now is doing, you know, well, lying yeah, well, on his marriage and shit. Yeah. <laughs> welcome down, Rab Big Stephen. What's up, man? What's up, oh, Randy, man? Oh, hey, shit, hey. I had to update my phone right quick. What you was going to say, though, Brody? Hey, who, who dog is, what, what dog is that right there in, in the pro, your profile photo? Oh man, that's uh Mr. Hanky, the one and only. That's a that's a good looking dog right there. Yeah, yeah. That was one I of think, our I, old I yeah. think somebody somebody posted his picture on my group, I think. Yep. Recently. Yeah. Yeah. You? Yeah, I seen it. I seen it. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good looking dog, man. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he was just kind of weird though. He was real shy of people. Yeah, that's and what he just like to hump the chain all day and shit. That's why we ended up selling them. Like yeah. we had, we had like three, four champs on the yard at one time. No, you know, rocking and rolling, and he was one of them. He was just a weirdo. He was game as yeah. fuck though. He yeah. was real game. Yeah, I think I think that's what they put. He was weird, but a good dog or something like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 And to go to what we we just talking about with the rhyme list. Yeah, man. There's so many dogs out there. And, 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 and dog men out there that don't get the shine. Everybody now knows about the legends of the past, especially if there was in any Richard Stratton books or old sporting dog journals and stuff like that. You see the little interviews and stuff like that, and people do the voiceovers and put them on YouTube, and those people are, like, immortalized and stuff like that. But it's a lot of people who didn't want that or didn't seek that attention. You know what I'm saying? And they were very successful. You know, you don't even hear their name until you're talking to somebody like Mr. Garcia, and then he bring up somebody. Like, Who, who's that guy? I never heard of this dude. Whatever. It's people currently. We talked about this last week or the week before. It's people currently that have had champions, grand champions, are very successful, but you'll never know them because the times are different. They can't come out and say, "Yeah, I did this, I did that." Not if they're smart. They can't come out and just say what they're currently doing or any of that stuff. So you'll never know them, you know? So everybody's chasing, um, like, those dogs from the ROM list. But, you know, you know, I mean, just it's, it's shit out here today smacking all that shit, to yeah. be honest with you. Yeah, they're, they're, like I said, there's, there's really no way of telling. I'm not saying that some of them aren't legitimate. I'm sure they are. But, but uh, you know, to, to keep track of all the wins and who's really an ROM or not, it's, it's real hard to do. You know, and those old guys, you know, I mentioned before we had a get together and uh, I met a lot of them, you know, some of them I already knew. And most of them, people never even heard their name. If they did, it's just something they wrote about, them, but nothing about their records or the dogs they had. Like, you know, like someone like Jerry Bean, he's real old. He was around a long time and he got a lot of dogs, but most people wouldn't even recognize or know who he was, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah, that's that's just that's the way it is now, you know. Which I'm not saying it's bad, you know. People should be quiet, and, but you should be honest too, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just imagine all the the local people, all the regional guys, the guys that 
pretty much dominated their state or the three states in their surrounding yeah. areas. You yeah. know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Back, back in, you know, and as time went on, you know, because of the circumstances, people did have to travel a lot more. And some people just liked to travel. Some people actually preferred it, you know. But but back in the day, man, it, there, there, you could go two blocks and there'd be somebody that was good that you could go into. You know, you could go to another town. You could drive two hours, four hours, six hours, stay in your whole state, you know, especially a state like California or, you know, Texas, you know, big states, Florida. There, there was so many, you really didn't have to go anywhere, you know, and and top guys, you know, and, and every once in a while you did, you know. I didn't really travel that much, you know. I went to uh, Arizona and and uh, 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 Las, what's Las Vegas in Nevada, you know. But there was so many, so many competitors in in California, and it's such a big state, you know. If you drive one end of California to the other, it'll take you 15 hours, you know. Yeah. It stretch it stretches basically from New York all the way to Florida, you know. Where smaller states, you know. They could go two hours and they're in another state. Three hours, they're in across mm -hmm. two states, you know. But the competition, like you said, regionally, there was a bunch of it, you know. Just, just, you know, you could do it every weekend if you wanted to. Yeah, from where from where I'm at, I can go in four hours. I can drive through. I can drive. I can, I can go through Chicago, Indiana, and end up in. Fucking Michigan in four hours and shit. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 like that. Yeah, yeah. For me, four hours is just four and a half hours. That's just to Sacramento, you know, uh, San Francisco, you know, or L.A., you know. Right. And then you got you got another, you know, four, or five hours to get to San Diego or, you know, the border or whatever. You know. Mm -hmm. And in Texas, there were so many guys there. Again, like there, you know, people you wouldn't even. I've heard of, you know, we all know the famous names like Mayfield and Carver and Bobby Hall and all that, but most people don't know who Ken Click was or Jerry Branham, you know, or uh, even Jack Carver, you know, or uh, just, you know, Jim Usselton and, right. and there's a bunch of them, man. Yeah, I, and I think all those guys deserve credit for uh, keeping the breed alive and contributing in their way that they contributed to the keeping the breed alive. You know what I mean? I'm not one of those people who think that if you didn't do this and this and that, and then you yeah. ain't shit. I don't believe in all that shit. I think everybody played a, a part, important role in uh, yeah. keeping the breed alive. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. And and even now, people are trying to, you know, they hear about these guys or hear about the blood they have, and they're looking for it, and it's all gone. You know, it's there's nothing left. And, man, they were some good dogs, well-bred dogs and winners and, you know, a lot of them. I, I've seen a lot of a lot of multiple winners, you know, people wouldn't even heard of. They 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 would know the bloodline basically, but they wouldn't know the dogs, you know. Right. And they were they were some badass dogs, man. You know, yeah. You know, I mean it's so many champions out here today that people don't even know. And it, it and it's hard because it's like, okay, you gotta do your investigation, but you know, because some people are full of shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a lot of it's sometimes it's you know, yeah. people are counting like off the chain stuff is contract yeah. matches and shit. This is weird shit, you know. I I yeah. heard one guy one guy say I forget what it was about, but but he said you know if I collect a forfeit, that's like a win, right? And I, I was like, no, no <laughs> you know, because the guy did you know the guy didn't show up or he you know I, my I was ready, but you know, and I was there, but he you know I collected a forfeit, so that should count as a win. No. Hell no, you won the four feet and that's <laughs> yeah, it, motherfucker. Get out of here. Yeah. It, it's starting to change the rules, you know, and change the, you know, if it, Hell you know, that's yeah. Like, if I see just a pretty four feet, they weigh the grand champ if that was the case. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'd be a bunch of, I'd have a bunch more, you know. <laughs> Hell yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they just trying to bend the rules. That's like saying every pretty girl you see, you could have slept with her, so that counts, right? Right, you know? right. No, it don't. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? I have Trill Will in the chat. Salute, bro. Salute to everybody down there kicking it in Texas this weekend, man. Uh, with Jay Good. Hey, uh, Ram, what's your thoughts on um, the question about the round list? 
Again, bro, like y'all was uh, chopping down on, man, it's kind of hard to call it these days, you know. You could only know the champions that, you know, that's in your circle, you know, and what that dog is producing and all that good shit, bro. Other than that, you know, unless you in the game like that, you're not going to know. Like, I think we was talking like two weeks ago and some shit out there right now that's producing. Motherfucker got like three, four grand champs, a whole maybe 15 champions off one dog. But if you don't know those guys, you will fucking never know that, you know? So it's kind of hard to see. You just got to go off a motherfucking word, man. That's why I said last week, you know, try keeping your word just for the weekend, you know? Just get back on that man time. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Because it's so easy to lie, man. Motherfuckers be fucking putting goddamn two-time winner, two-time off the chain, yada, yada, but like, bro, I just talked to you like six months ago. You didn't know how to fucking do a keep. Now you got a two-time <laughs> winner, two-time off the chain, and he a one-time game. Loser, ran that dog five times in six months. Without knowing how to do Like, come on, bro. Just well, keep it yeah. a buck. Shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody yeah, exactly. not a handler. Everybody not a conditioner. Just like everybody not a breeder. Everybody got their part in the game. You feel me? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Do your part and be great at whatever part of the game that you in. You don't got to lie, especially to me, you know? Yeah. yeah. I was dead ass just talking to you about how to condition and handle and shit. Now, all of a sudden, this dog got five under him. Ain't even yeah. been six months. Like, come on, let's keep it real. And he's still alive? Come they on, be, man. Who, they who be, you fooling? Yeah, they be, they, be count, they be counting all the backyard roads, backyard boogies, man. Yeah, school don't yeah. count. Yeah. Yeah. When you graduate school, that's what counts, right? <laughs> exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. A chicken ain't a dog, so if your dog killed a rat or a chicken, that's not a win. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> he's supposed to kill that shit. He probably yeah. didn't even eat it. That's how yeah. much of a pussy he <laughs> yeah. is. Hey, yeah. if, that, shit, yeah. if, that, if that's the case, Dr. Champ. Dr. Champ, man. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Doc, 12 months old, champion Doc. Right. He killed the <laughs> raccoon and two pigeons in the backyard. Right. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. Let's not forget the squirrel. Let's go, let's yeah. Get credit for yeah. The squirrel. Oh, he got four under his belt. He's going for grand champ. One <laughs> more. Let him catch that cat lackey later on tonight. Right. <laughs> grand champ by the weekend. Fuck out of here. That shit don't count. I wish it was that easy. Shit. Yeah. Mm. Hey, salute to uh, a hustle guy, methodology in the super chat. Appreciate you, brother. Showing love. All right. Let's get to this next question here. Um, what are your thoughts on the Carolina Red Boy Jocko dogs? What's your thoughts on it? Let's start with uh, Mr. Garcia. Yeah, at, uh, especially in my day because uh, uh, that's when they were really coming out, you know. And and uh, they, they were as good as anything, man. There was a bunch of them, you know. The The... As far as Jocko goes, Bob Bob Rasp made the breeding, you know. And this is something I talked about in my in my group one time is, you know, you make your breedings and you hope for the best, and 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 you know you expect them to work hopefully, you know. But sometimes the breedings come from places you you know that you don't expect, may not come from your best breedings or something that you didn't even think work or something you just you know. Uh, uh, you know, I'm gonna try it, or I'll do. You know, I'll do. My friend wants to, me to breed to his dog, or whatever. So you do it, and that's kind of what happened with Bob Rass. He didn't really. It wasn't really a pan, planned breeding to make Jocko and Argo and Apple and all them. He just had a couple of dogs, and he bred them, and it worked. And it ended up being, you know, as far as the Jocko side, you know, some of the best in history. And then, then you know, they made the Jocko, uh, they crossed the Red Boy into it, you know, and and it just, man, exploded. You got people like Tant and Donnie Holcomb and uh, uh, Ganey and a lot of people just, just you know, they were tearing up the South, man. And, and uh, it's just something that clicked real good together, you know. And, and it's kind of that, you know, going by the pedigrees, it's kind of that Colby Tudor cross, you know, that old rugged cross. So whether they realize it or not, it almost had the 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 you know like it had to work you know, mm -hmm. and, and of course the quality of the dogs too. You have the hard mouth jocko dog, stifle dogs, you know, that's something that that was passed down. You know, I was talking about Big Red. You know, he was a stifle dog too. He really didn't throw it that much, 
But them dogs, they threw it a lot, as far as I know. You know, uh, Jocko was a stifled dog. His sire was a stifled dog. Argo went to the stifle. You know, uh, a lot of them other ones. There's there's Toro and 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 uh, just a bunch of them. Jr. But they were they were real popular. But unlike you know some bloodlines, they backed up their their uh, pedigree with performance. You know, so you know even May Day's got that in them. You know, mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, you know all Macho Buck, all that stuff. So. It was good stuff, you know. I seen I seen some of them, but like I said, they were they were hot commodity back then, man. There's there's a shitload of them, man. Just a, as much as any other, you know, whether it's Eli Carver or Jeep Red Boy or Jeep Rascal or or uh, you know Kobe Lightner or whatever you want to say, you know, it was as much as as any other family of dogs that, that, that was successful. Yes, indeed. What you say, Ralph? <laughs> The only experience I had was with the stuff down from Termite through uh, Lockjaw's Booger, and you know Termite from uh, Carolina <laughs> Kennels, and I liked all of that stuff, man. You know, we had more good dogs than not coming down from there, and those dogs, like I was saying on a previous show, carried that Jocko phenotype all the way down to the one floppy ear, so... You know, that's one thing I looked for when dealing in those dogs. Now, I've had different Red Boy Jocko dogs, and the key word is had. They really wasn't my style of dog. I like it more on the Jocko side of the game, you know, as far as uh their performance goes. But, shit, I like them, man. Like I always say, it's good dogs everywhere, wherever you find them. Yeah. And, yes, you can find one in the trash and go fucking rule the world with that motherfucker. You know, shit like Grand Champion 35. He ain't produced worse a fuck, but couldn't nobody stop that little motherfucker. Nobody knew how he was bred, as the story goes. You know? Yep. Yep. He was an eight time so again, winner. And, and exactly. He was about back, he was about he was about eight years old when he won his yeah. last. Took, took and he was man. back in the day when you know you could throw a rock and it's gonna be a goddamn bulldog right there waiting for you. Yeah. Soon as the rock hit the ground, so that was a tough feat in itself, you know. Yeah, yeah. The termite, you know, he took more after. He's more heavy Jocko than mm -hmm. than than the yep. red side, and that's why I liked it. Though I like Jocko's whole style. You know, he had yeah. the finish. He was built right. A ton of mouth. A lot of athleticism. Game. You know, he had top gameness and deep gameness. He'll finish you, and he'll stay on your ass until he finish you. So no rank curves there. That's just my take on that. That's the, the shit I liked. Now, I had some stuff uh, from the Pit Island stuff, too. It was pretty decent, but it was crossed with the Jeep. And my dog took more after the Jeep side of the game. So, you know, that's my take with the Red Boy Jocko. I like it when you get it. You get some good shit. Uh, I had Burns hot dog stuff before, too. All that shit would do is just try to bite you. And bite everything around them, so we ain't work out too swell. <laughs> you know, I had to get rid of them motherfuckers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Got another question. That says, would it be better to start a program with pure strains or um, with crosses that's already been done? We go to you, uh, Mr. Garcia. Yeah, it, it's a, uh, it's more you know what dogs they are. You know, you you can start with anything. You know, and like speaking of the ROM list back in the day, most of the dogs on the ROM list were crossed. They weren't tight bred dogs. You know, the top top ones especially. You know, if you're thinking about, uh, you know, Dirty Mary, Honey Bunch, you know, Jeep, Frisco, uh, uh, Frisco, you know, uh, Art. You know, you could. It, it's just it depends on what you do with it after you get it. If you get a cross dog, you know. In my case, I, I would take it and line breed it, try to line breed it somehow. You know, if you're starting off with an inbred dog, I'd add a cross to it and then line breed it or, or line breed that, you know. And uh, I think there's a question about line breeding, too. We can get into that more. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, it, it matters, you know, like we always say, who you get the dog from, what did they do with them, what, what, how good they are. And then you make your decisions going forward. You know, what are you going to breed it to and why? You know, and, and each step you make a breeding, 
you know, you, you see the results and then you judge those results and see if you're going to move forward in whichever direction or, or not. You know, some some people don't like to admit it, you know, and, and some people won't do it. But sometimes you make a brain that don't work. You stop right there. Don't don't keep trying to make it work. You know, don't don't don't. Go that way. You you could try, you know, maybe maybe a couple of times or whatever. You know, you breed to a different female bred the same way. But if you find out where that the percentages ain't there, the dogs ain't that good. You know, don't don't keep repeating it over and over again. You know, you follow the dogs where they lead you, the best ones, and stick with that. And you know, there there people a lot of people won't agree with me. You know, they have different ways of breeding, which makes it interesting. That's okay. But but that was my way of doing it. You know, I didn't give them a lot of time because I didn't have a lot of dogs and I didn't I didn't want a lot of dogs. So if my breedings didn't work off the bat, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't pursue it, you know. Right. <clears throat> uh, so what's up, Tay Tay? I see you in the building. Who's the brown sugar Tay Tay? What's up, Ram? What's your uh, take on it, bro? What up, bank statement? AJ, I see y'all. Uh I've had more luck. Me personally was starting off with a more pure dog and then making my own crosses. But, you know, I, I had some success with getting a cross dog already and just putting taking the, one of the lines that was in that cross and adding to that, too. So but the most of my vic, vic, victories came from, you know, a, a solid dog. And then we'll make our own out crosses as we see fit. It's just easier that way. For us, because we knew what we was looking for. And again, being honest with what our dogs was lacking, as good as they were, we was able to take dogs that were from different bloodlines but had the attributes that we was looking for and add it into there. And, again, you got to be honest with what you got, you know, good, bad, and, and ugly. You feel me? You ain't always been fucking bad bitches. You, you fucked some fat bitches before, probably fucking one right now. <laughs> Just keep it real with yourself, though. That's all mm -hmm. I'm saying. Shit, I fuck fat bitches still too. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, ain't wrong with it. I ain't got no problem with that. Hell no, know. especially now that it's finna get cold. Shit, <laughs> more cushion for that pushing, boy. <laughs> and I've been working out too, so I can hold them big ass legs up. Mm -hmm. Going down. I say that to say this though. I'm being honest. I'm the same way with the dogs. When I'm looking at my shit, I don't care if they looking like aces. I'm going to see something in there, man, just from looking at the shit long enough that I, I can improve on. You could always improve on anything, bro. Just keep that little hint in, in the back of your mind whenever you, you know, going to make a breeding. That's, you know, my take on breeding, too, because that's why I would breed what we was lacking for, you know. It's just Indeed. easier for me that way. But again, brutally honest with myself and my stock and what I've been feeding, you know, I didn't fucking bred dogs and raised them up. And five years later, none of them work. They all got to go. It sucks. But you want to be successful. You got to be honest with this shit, bro. You can't lie. You can't cheat. This is like boxing. You can't play boxing. You either fighting or you getting fucked up. Same with the dogs. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> all right. What, what's your take on, uh, uh, Ram? I think this is one of your questions about tire kickers, man. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, man. That shit is just, it's the worst. And I get why some people do it, because, you know, you be excited. You a nouveau in the game, and you want to talk to, in your mind, what's an established dog man and shit. But when he posted that pedigree and pups for sale, he posted that on the business. He wasn't looking for no friends or none of that shit, man. Like, I hang up on tire kickers real quick. You got fucking five minutes to talk to me on the line. You want to just shoot the shit? That's cool. I get it. But I didn't invite you into my life for us to shoot the shit. You going to buy a dog or not, man. And that's with anything. You're going to buy a car or whatever. Just don't waste people's time, man. Like, grown men don't got time to waste, bro. I was just telling the chick, like, I run my own business and I co-own three other businesses. I ain't got time to just be kicking in and fucking around and fucking on you. I'm getting to the bag, and I'm raising my kids, too. I'm a busy man. You feel me? So that's time. If I fucking got time to talk to you on the phone about a business deal, keep it at the business deal. Don't waste my fucking time. That's all I'm saying on the tire kicker. That shit is fucking ass, bro. 
I ain't fucking hit you. If I wanted to be your friend, I hit you up on Facebook. If I post a pad and here go the number to contact if you want something off this bitch, a pup, a stud, whatever, don't call me, man, and talk about no boxing sports, none of that. We ain't homies. I don't fucking know you like that. Just mm -hmm. keep it fucking straight, and we could build a relationship off that if I see you solid. Cool. Next breeding I got, I might just throw you a pup because you kept it trill. Just send the shipper, you know? <laughs> But don't fucking waste the grown man time, bro. That's some whole shit. Don't do it. Right, right. What's your take, Mr. Garcia? Yeah, pretty much the same. You don't, you know, the, the if I had dogs today, you know, if I had dogs today and I was selling them, I'd guarantee a healthy pup or, you know, young dog or grown or whatever, and the pedigree would be straight, and that's it. I wouldn't give a lot of information because you don't know who you're talking to. Right. And like Ram said, you don't have a lot of time to, to you know, to be, people want to ask a lot of questions. You, you could spend an hour with them. They could sound interested. And I guarantee you 99% out of the time, they're going to say, I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. well, why the fuck did I waste all my time doing all of that? You know, right. I ain't going to give you, I wouldn't give you no records, no nothing. This is the ped. This is the dog. If you want it, this is the price. Buy it. If not, that's okay too. And see you later. That's it. If you're really interested, you know, in something, you should at least done some homework before you ever call anybody. <laughs> right. You know, if you ain't gonna do that, then you're too fucking lazy, you know, to 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 do your own legwork. You know, at least know the bloodlines or something. You know, and and uh, if you don't know the person, you know. Uh, I wouldn't give them all kinds of information. You know, that, that's led to the downfall of people, even recently. That, that happened to someone, you know, sold a dog to a cop. Right. Because they, they give too much information. They want to, you know, they, they want to brag about their shit and they want to, they you know, sound legitimate. And, and you know, that, 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 like I said, that could be your downfall. You don't know these people. You don't know who they are. Right. You wouldn't spend a lot of time, you know, unless that's all you got is time to, to talk dogs. And if all you're doing is talking dogs all day long, you ain't taking care of your dog. You know, you ain't spending time with them. So oh, Hell no, you can't do dogs and talk dogs all day <laughs> yeah. long. It don't all work day. like that. <laughs> I tell people like, all the time, that's why I'm on Facebook. That's why I can do all this. I, You know, whatever I do with the dog, because I don't have any. If I had dogs, I guarantee you I wouldn't be on there that much. I wouldn't, you know, I might check in every once in a while because I'd be out with my dog. You know, I'd be doing that. Yeah, exactly. And that's why we, we we make time once a week to do this shit. Yeah. Like I just came home from work. Usually right now I'm in the back cleaning up dog shit, checking water bowls, all the dog man shit you're supposed to do every day after work. Yeah, exactly. Even even back in the day when I used to hook dogs up, I'd call somebody up or they'd call me up. It'd take five minutes. This is the weight, this is the amount, this is the date, whatever, you know, we're gonna do it or not. If we are, cool. I'll see you then. You know, uh, uh, I didn't really talk to him until I saw him. You know, most of the people I knew him already, but there wasn't a lot, you know, like what you got and what you bring in and which dog and this and that and da 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 da. You just going for weights. It don't matter. I didn't care right. what they brought, long, long as they did the weight. So even then, back then, I didn't do a lot of talking that way. You know, afterwards, we it's over. We can bullshit all night long if you want. You know. Yeah, because we didn't fucking shed blood together now. We bonded in blood now. Now I see you for real. You came with your shit at the weight we agreed on at the time with the bread, as did I. Now we could build on that just because we both kept our word as men. Yeah, And that's how yeah. you build strong relationships as men. You got to fucking put it in blood, yep. you know? Yep. <clears throat> Yep. And, and you know, you know somebody you don't, you don't know or somebody you heard of and you know they're legit, you go do your thing. You're going to build that relationship. You're going to see them all the time. You're going to see them at this show, that show. You're going to go into them, win, lose, all that. So the relationship's going to build over time. Well, it's the same thing with, with buying a dog, especially nowadays. You know, If somebody wants a dog, buy it. If you like the way it's bred and, and you heard this guy's a good guy or whatever, buy the dog. And then after you get it, you, know, you call him every once in a while. Hey, Puff's doing good. Dog doing good. Thanks. This and that. He might call you. Hey, how's that dog doing good? Okay, cool. You can build on that. But right. to waste time, you know, talking for hours and 
this and that take you two weeks to make a decision and I'll get back to you. And, you know, never mind. Thanks. I went a different way. It, it just a waste. It's just <laughs> not even, not even worth it. You know? yeah. yeah. That shit is the fucking worst, man. And one of my close homeboys, I was when I had uh, some pups for sale. He put on one of his homies on to it. That motherfucker just want to talk everything but the goddamn dogs, man. I, yeah. just, I started to cuss him out, but he was my homeboy's homie, so I just hung up on him and cussed my pot now. Like, man, why yeah. you send this motherfucker over here, man? I don't know him. Like, he cool with you. What y'all talk about is y'all demo. Right, I don't right. know this motherfucker. Yeah, I'm thinking he the police now. You know, I think <laughs> right. everybody the police anyway yeah. until we do some gangster shit. So, yeah. And that's, don't catch me on the phone talking no dumb shit. None of that if I don't know you. Fuck out of right. here, man. And that's why I'm glad you said that because that's why when people be hitting me up, people hit me up on Instagram or something and be like, hey, man, uh, what's Ram's uh, info? Hey, how do I get in contact with Ram? Like, bro, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, get the fuck out. I don't want to I don't want to be responsible for linking yeah. Ram with some fuck shit. I'm not yeah. no, you you gotta find Ram on your own. I'm not gonna be the middleman for no bullshit in case you might be the fucking police or weirdo or something. Then you know if you mean? find me, I'm still gonna fucking treat you like you the police, man. Like you gotta come with references with me still, bro. For real. Mm -hmm. That's how I am. Like when I was signing up my dogs for schoolboy registration, I was like, "Here, I'll put you in with my partner who got the dogs to confirm that." Like that's just how I am, you know. I'm gonna yeah. keep it trill with you, but if you need that backup, boom, here go my references. These motherfuckers I fuck with. These how the dogs is bred. They ain't lying on the pegs. I don't fuck with motherfuckers like that. So yeah, I got a whole list on the Instagram of motherfuckers. Want to be my friend? Like, man, I don't fucking know you. No, get out of here. <laughs> and you know, and you know what the the tire kickers. A lot of times, it be guys who they not really ready to buy a dog. They curious, all right, yeah. and they, and they want they curious, and they want the 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 seller to give them their sales pitch. It's like, man, get the fuck out of here, dude. If a motherfucker got this shit advertised, if you heard he got dogs for sale. You've seen the pets. You know how they bred, okay? It's no the man shouldn't have to give you no sales pitch and tell you uh, all this illegal ass shit, and then you know have him saying some stupid shit on the phone. And you shouldn't ask that stupid shit either. Don't be listening to these goofies telling y'all to call people, asking them what these dogs have done or what they've done. Don't don't do that shit. They'll hang up on you, and you'll be labeled a fucking rat or the police or some shit. A fucker won't, won't answer the phone for your ass. Don't be asking weird questions, man. You gotta know. Do your research. Because if you just want a dog, if you just, hey, Max, want a dog, you know what my homeboy used to do? When he had some dogs for sale, people would call him and they say, hey, man, you know, uh, um, what they bred like. And he'd get mad because he got him, he got his shit on the website, the pedigree is on the website. So he's like, okay, you ask me what they bred like. And say, yeah, I'm just, I'm looking for a good dog. I just want a good dog. Say, so you know what you do, man? Hang up with me. And go on Craigslist and look in the for sale, the, the, the pet section, and get your dog, man. If you just want a dog, it's it's dogs that need homes and shit. You know what I'm saying? Go get your dog. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Go to the go to the Humane Society and just get a dog. You know what I'm saying? Don't be wasting nobody else's time. You know, because you because when you ask questions like that, usually you're gonna be arguing about the price. You're not gonna want to pay for the goddamn uh, uh the damn uh, uh transporter. You know what I mean? Oh man, see, I remember back in the day, man, I just been getting a good bullet. The price was with the transporter. Like, no, right. fuck, it wasn't. Back in what yeah. day, motherfucker? It was always the pup and then whatever the transport cost you. Right. It's, yeah. yeah. It's not a one fucking, it's not Walmart, man. You don't get yeah. everything at once from here. Like, I did yeah. the hard part. I made sure these dogs was worth breeding, then bred the dogs, then raised the pups up long enough for them to be for sale. Motherfucker, you call your ship and do the rest. Yeah. Now, if you do that, like we were saying earlier, like I'll fuck with you. Like, okay, you kept it real. I got this other breeding coming up. Just send the ship. I got you, homie. Just on some man shit, you know? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, and I'll, I'll say this too, like, uh, and um, some people who sell dogs, if you don't have your prices listed. Then on your website, you're going to attract a lot of tire kickers. So just be honest. Like, if you don't have prices, you can scare a lot of time wasters off if you just put on your website, you're charging $3,000 for a pup or something. Motherfuckers who don't want to spend that money, they're not going to even call you. But if you don't have that price listed, 
you invite people to call you and ask you the question, same question every day. Hey, hey uh, so uh, how much is the pup from that breed? And then you give them the price, and they're like, ah, okay. Now, they already know they're not going to buy it for that price, but now you got to deal with this little awkward conversation you're going to have with a motherfucker for the next four or five minutes. It's a waste of time. Just put that shit on your website. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Hell yeah. I don't argue prices with nobody, man. If I want it, I'm going to spend the money to get it. Like, I went and bought the fucking Daytona goddamn Red Eye Hellcat. I ain't go to Dodge and fucking haggle the price. So this is how much I got down. This is my credit look like. Give me my keys. The price is the price, man. Either you fuck with it or you fuck off. Like I said, that's how I live my life. I either fuck with it or I move the fuck on. Mm-hmm. It's that easy, bro. What up, Bert? I see you, homie. What's up? All right, let me see here. Uh, we got um, somebody says, I recent, recently did a breeding. <laughs> Uh, that's very important to me. When he came out, there are a lot of. Oh, okay, yeah. The brother said he did a breeding, and um, uh, when the boy, when his male pulled out, a lot of semen fell out of, of the uh, female. Said, should I be worried? Her progesterone was uh, thirteen point five. Ram, I saw you saw you answering that uh, in the in the thing. Oh you know, yeah. Man. Yeah, I had to pull out my little nerd hat. I did go to vet tech school for a little while, so I do know a little bit about a little bit. But yeah, I was telling them, you know, the progesterone progesterone uh, I have fucking DOS effects mouth today. <laughs> Them levels, you know they cool, but they, they it's more important uh to pay attention to the, the prime ovulation days. That's why I was telling uh the good brother who asked that. You know uh Plus shit, like I told them too in the first part of the answer, if you go and you cream pie some pussy, a lot of the shit gonna run out, but nine months later you can still have a baby, you know? Or, I know, some people who do it old school, after the male pull out, they will barrel the bitch. Grab her by her back legs and bloop, keep her up, you feel me? I was never one to do that, because again, I don't want a bunch of pups, because I want to keep them all, you know? So I wouldn't care how much ran out of shit. I only want three or four of them to go through. And, you know, doing it that way, I had less dogs, but I had more good dogs than not, too. So, yeah, I, I didn't really care about that part of, you know, the, I let that shit run out. It don't matter. Yeah, I think, yeah. Especially if you're going to be doing, like, if, you, if you're doing, like, artificial insemination and shit, man, yeah, you got to. Let that shit let that shit get all the way up in that motherfucker. I'd be too scared to I'm not a breeder, so I don't I'm not, you know, but I'm just saying, you gotta let that shit get up in that motherfucker, man. He just pulling that shit out real quick and shooting it in there. Let that shit soak in that motherfucker for a while. Like them girls used to remember them girls who try to get pregnant and bitches be sitting up in there and stay they stay in doggy style for like twenty minutes after you get done fucking like bitch lay your ass. Yeah. Down. Hell yeah. <laughs> shit, I may get up and do some squats, bitch. Yeah, you ain't finna trick me. Right, it was, just, no. it was just laid up in the bed, doggy style. Wait, what you doing? I just like this position. No, nah, bitch, go up in there and use the bathroom. Fuck out of here. I'm trying to Hell do yeah, push it all out, motherfucker. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Your pussy you just one step above jacking off. I don't want no kids with you. You ain't even got no good <laughs> pussy. <laughs> <laughs> What's your take on that, Mister Garcia? <laughs> well, the, the back of the day, artificial insemination—that was my forte. My dogs were all aggressive. They fight each other, bitches, males. And I missed a lot of breedings before that because, you know, I, I wasn't one to tie them up and use a breeding box and all that stuff and tape their mouth. out. It's just too much hassle. So this kid, he wasn't even a real dog man, but he was a kid. And he took his dogs that were like that, too. We took him to the vet and had the vet do it. The vet showed him how to do it. And he showed me. So... Mm-hmm. uh most of mine, that's what I did, artificial insemination. And and real quick, I can go through it. You know, I, I'd have my wife help me, you know, and, and you need a, a catheter and, and it's kind of bent like that, right? It was plastic. Hook it right. to a syringe, right? You jack the dog off into a syringe with the catheter hooked on. You put your finger over the tip so the sperm don't run out. And I would have my wife sit down and the the dog's head would be in between her legs sideways and the, the female's back end is over her one of her legs right to the side. And I don't know about progesterone, none of that stuff, 
you know, I counted the days, but, but when you're doing the artificial insemination, when you stick that tube in there, if they're ready, it slides in. They're, they're greased up, you know. If you're too early, it kind of, you got to kind of force it in there. If you're too late, same thing. But if they're ovulating, if you hit the right days, it slides in real smooth. Right. That, that's how I could tell they were ready to be bred. And then, and then you push that tube all the way in. And most dog, that tube, it's going to be right up to their uterus. So when you shoot it in, it it's, goes right into their uterus, right? And that gravity, her back end being held up, will keep it in there. You keep it up for about five minutes, you know. Also, you know, after you shoot that sperm, you detach the syringe, right? And leave the tube inside her and you hold the tube with one, you know, with one hand. And you take that syringe and you draw back about five cc's of air, hook it back up and push that air into her. And then you slide the syringe and the, and the tube out, hold her up. She's pregnant, man. She's bred. Really? So, yeah, it, 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 the, the, you, you could, but like Ram was saying, you know, some comes out or you were saying some of it comes out, some of it's going to stay in there. And if, if you miss a breeding is generally because you're too early or too late. Or someone's sterile, or the bitch too old, or something like that. You know. And also, the male he might be too hot to breed. You know, like you got to keep that male cool. So if you yeah. just got him out on the chain in the summer, yeah, I mean, you just yeah, walk I, a bitch up yeah. to breed him. Like the yeah, sperm nah. count go naturally going to be low. You know, yeah, or or it's not even going to be there because they're they're dead sperm because they're overheated. That's why exactly. their neck sac is, is outside their body because. It, it keeps the sperm cooler than, than the temperature of their body. So I never yep. did it outside on the chain. We always brought the dogs inside. The bitch would be with my wife in one room. I'd have the male in the other room. I'd just wipe, get a, get a paper towel or a tissue, wipe the female, go in the next room, put it up to the male's nose, and just jack him off. You know, they get the Man, idea. you're a real and, motherfucker and, for that, boy. Yeah, I'm only yeah. jacking one dick. And that's yeah, mine. You, you <laughs> yeah. It, believe me, it takes a little bit to get over that. You know, if you want dogs, you'll do it. I'll put it that way. Oh, yeah. That's why I, I'm not a breeder. I got yeah, no shame yeah. in saying I will you know not I mean? do whatever it takes to get a breeding dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's that. Handling and conditioning, kinda, I yeah. got you. I'm going to go to, if yeah. I got to walk the dog 10 yeah. miles a day, I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. But I got a one kinda, big rule. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, kind of funky, but, but, but you, you, you'll get over, you know, and, and, uh, uh, for me, I, even, well, I even, got two, you know, yeah, if that ever, yeah. I'm gonna just fly out there, drive yeah, out there to you. I gotta or, get this or, done, yeah. But I'm having trouble over, grabbing I'll, this dog, yeah, Nick. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, it ain't a problem. I'll go out there, we'll, we'll go, you know, ham it up. And, and, oh, yeah, I got yeah. homies who do that right now. Yeah. I just, yeah. I'll be amazed, like, damn, yeah. I could never do that. Yeah, <laughs> you know what you do, man. That's that's what I, I told my wife. I said, look, if I start breeding these dogs, you know, and, and if I gotta do some. Artificial insemination and shit. You gonna have to jerk them. I said, I'm not jerking out. Like you gonna have to, cause I'm not jerking them. So you gonna have to jerk them. You know yeah, I mean, you're shit. a girl. You do it. You know. Right, right. Yeah, you you, you gonna have to jerk them off. Well, you, you know got I mean? the soft hands anyway. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Put the lotion on. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I d might even help the male get excited. You know? Right, right. Hell yeah. I get excited if I'm getting jacked. Shit. Yeah. By yeah. some other hand that's not mine. A good female <laughs> yeah. hand. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Good old old fashioned. Never hurt nobody. <laughs> yeah. 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 I did all my breedings like that. Even with dogs that, that would breed naturally, like Big Red. I just for me it was easier. The, the whole thing takes ten minutes. They ain't tied up. You don't have to mess with them. It ain't a hassle. It's just wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am, and it's done. And I've got anywhere from two pups to eleven pups using anywhere from three cc's to ten cc's of sperm. God damn, that's dope. Hell yeah. yeah. The last I breeding fucking... I did, the last breeding I did, the last breeding I did was three three cc's of sperm, and I got eleven pup. You know. God just, damn. Just and just you ain't had to deal with no fight crazy bitch no being stuck to a dog. horny male. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah. And out of works. the eleven, out of the eleven, nine of them were matched. You know. So so that just me bragging a little. That's bit, a but, fucking yeah. That's good shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. So only you know, two of them didn't make it. Yeah. 
Yeah. But back to the original question, if some fall out, I would just count that as the curves falling out. You know, they <laughs> wasn't game enough to make it to the egg. Fuck them. Exactly. Let them stay on the ground. Yeah. The bulldog's gonna make it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, indeed. Let's see here. <clears throat> the other question we got here. Uh, best commercial place to buy an American Pit Bull Terrier? Uh, somebody asked for advice. Uh, it says Tom Gardner, uh, Pit Island, or MasterBuck.com um, for the commercial. What y'all say, Ram? I go with uh, MasterBuck.com, man. It's them the only three choices I had because they putting out more consistent dogs, you know. And uh, I found the old keep, old uh, A-Town that sent me back in the day. So, yeah, I'm going to shoot some business day way because he helped me out with that. That was a long, long time ago. I just found the old email. I think it was like Marine Gaze Keeper or something in there back when I used to talk to him on Peds Online years and years ago when he was down in Mexico. So, yeah, MachoBuck.com if you're going for, you know, a commercial grade. And they not even like commercial dogs like that. They still, you know, active and competing type dogs. But they just sell on a commercial level. I would stay away from Pitt Island. He might got a little bit of heat. And with Tom, it's a roll of the dice, you know. I had fucking about eight dogs straight from him with the Earl Jr. shit. And all of them ended up in the curb pile. But I know people who did good with it. It's just not my luck when I shopped over there. So MachoBuck.com it is for me. And salute to old Albert for looking out on that keep back in the day, too. That's a good luck. Okay. Uh, what's your thoughts on it, uh, Mr. Garcia? I have no idea. I'm yeah. out of the loop, you know. Yeah. I, I couldn't, uh, you know, yeah. go with what Ram said, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think it's about, uh, yeah, where, what, what, what you're looking for, man, and, and your blood, what blood you're looking for, if you're looking for. I mean, you, I, I wouldn't, you know, I never got a dog from any, any of them, but I do have dogs with uh, dogs from them in their uh, in, in the pedigree. Uh, but, you know, I think it's just about personal taste and uh, what you like and shit like that. You know what I mean? But, yeah. You know, I mean, you all got some good dogs, from my understanding. You know what I mean? I know uh, Pitt Island had a little trouble and stuff like that. But I think he still got some, some good dogs over there. But uh, let me see here. Let's see what we got here. Hey, salute, Mr. Hicks. Shit, don't play him always looking for something different, man. You know, variety is the spice of life in my book. That's why, you know, I had so many different good dogs bred different ways. I love trying, you know, different shit, especially the shit that people don't believe in. I like to make them a believer, you know. So, hell, yeah, I hit you up. Uh, I contact you on uh, Facebook. I'll be seeing you over there. So, yeah, I hit you up, Brody. Is that Obs Hicks? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Mr. Hicks. Yeah, he, he in the group, too. He in your group, yeah. too. Yeah, he's good people, man. Yeah, that's so a solid OG too, right there, man. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, he is. Been been breeding his own dogs for years and years. And I hear nothing but good about him. He's he's good people, very knowledgeable. You know, he he uh, um, contributes a lot. You know, which I appreciate it. You know, and uh, he's just a good uh, guy. So salute, my friend. Yeah, I was starting contributing too on your page a little more. I posted up a couple shits earlier. I'm gonna get yeah. on it though. I just had get to on. fill it out, see who all on there and shit. I'll be seeing old Havana Danny on there. That's the homie. Yeah. There's a lot of old, you know, a lot of people like it. There's a lot of, you know, Leander Daigle's there and he's an old, old trick yeah. agent man. Yeah, old, uh, OTK, they be yeah. on there yeah. dropping good yeah. game. Yeah. And uh uh Shit, you name it. You know, TDK's on there. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of, lot of, lot of. He's good. He's he, he's very knowledgeable, very experienced man. I seen some of his dogs back in the day. We've had a relationship for decades. Yeah, I liked his stuff. I like how he put his own stuff together and worked it. Yeah. Man, win, lose, or draw, he was coming with it. Exactly. Just just looking at him, they're solid dogs. Even Ronald Boyle's on there. He don't he don't contribute too much. You know, he's busy or whatever, but. He's a good guy, man. I learned that's probably who I learned the most from when I was a kid. Didn't know shit. He was one of the few that would answer everything. He was honest, you know. Uh, always 
told the truth, always, you know, win, lose, or draw. A good, solid a man, you know? Exactly, exactly. You ain't got to be a gangster, but you got to be a man, you know? Exactly, yeah. yeah. He was in the Hound Dogs, too. He probably still is, you know? Uh, and he bred them both, you know, pit dogs and hound dogs the same way, same methods, you know. And uh, he, he'd concentrate on one or two, you know, uh, individuals, line breed them, add some crosses in, you know, and and made his own family a dog. He was successful right from the get-go, and it's probably because he had experience with the hound dog first, you know. Yes, indeed. Yeah, buddy. All right, we've got another question out. Here is, um, um, I think this question question came from Big. Uh, is it a good to keep your dog in the uh, heat year-round? What's your thoughts on that, Mr. Garcia? No. No. Exercise them regularly, keep them fit, healthy, yeah. But in keep, an actual keep, no. Because when you put them in keep, you're going to peek them out. And if you don't do nothing with them, it's going to drive them crazy. You know, that's my experience. Everybody don't have the same experience. But an actual keep is a beginning and end workout program, conditioning program. You know, you start them off, there's a beginning, middle, and the end. And the end is the peak part. And when you do that, you're supposed to do something with it. And you can do that if you're into the legal sports. You can do that with weight pool, you know, lure course, all that stuff we talked about before. Even even if you want to, you know, you're a hog hunter or something like that. You can do that. But to, but to keep them in keep all year around, no. They, 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 they. Once they hit that peak, you know, it doesn't last long. And once once that part is done, there's there's a downtime that they need to recoup from that. And, and uh, you know, give them some time off and then you do it again, you know. But, but uh, no, I wouldn't advise that. But regular exercise, yeah, if you do it two, three, four days a week, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, just to keep them fit, it's good. It'll keep their... Firm count up. It keeps the fat around their heart off. It, it, there's a lot of benefits to it. You know, you get the mm -hmm. bond with your dog. You work them. You teach them. You know how. Or, you know what you want to do with them. They learn your method, or you figure out what they like and what they don't like, and what they'll do and what they won't do. That's good. I would do that. Exercise them from when they're young, and I did. You know, from pup. Not too much. I didn't really put no hard work on them until they were close to two years old. You know. But always, always did something with them, you know. But actual keep, hell no. Right. What's your take on the round? Fuck no. Oh. Hell no. <laughs> you want to fuck your dog up, go ahead and do that, you know. But if you just want him to be healthy and fit and, you know, he looked the part, there's nothing wrong with, you know, three, four times a week exercising him. But a full keep, hell no. That's, that's hard as fuck on a dog, you know. When you in keep and you really in keep, you know, and you overworked your dog, sometimes you got to rest for three, maybe four days in a row. That's four days of fucking missed work. You're not getting paid for that if you was on a regular job. Same with the dog. So, hell no. A fucking year-round keep, you kill a dog, man. And, you know, I heard of dudes, you know, uh, condition their dogs for 12 weeks when the dog didn't need it and still get out there and, blow hot in 15, 20, because he's overworked now. It's real easy to overwork a dog, man, and you miss his peak like Mr. Garcia was alluding to right now. That peak is like pointing a bird. If you anybody who fuck with the game file know what I mean when I'm talking about pointing them, you know? And if you do that on a dog and you don't do nothing with him, it's like you fucking getting some pussy and not nothing. You're going to have blue balls. You gonna want to fuck some shit up. All of that shit come into play. He gonna be doing dumb shit he never did because his body is telling him like, man, I'm ready to do this. So now he biting on the kennel inside. Now he fighting the chain. Now he at the end of his chain barking the whole yard out two, three in the morning. And that's just you know the fucking the mental fucking anguish you gotta go through. Let alone the physical. You can fucking pull a muscle. Blow a shoulder out, fuck some joints up. It's just so much shit. Just during the regular eight week keep, you can fuck a dog up. But year round keep, a dog ain't gonna be worth a fuck. Like, yeah. 
Just pay attention to Greyhounds. They be in shape and close to their race weight, but they not in fucking racing shape. They not in no. their race keep. Um, well, it's the same thing with um, boxers. Same thing with bodybuilders. Um, yeah. You know, when you see a bodybuilder or something in the, who step on stage and they shred it, you know what I'm saying? They went through this whole fucking diet regimen. You know what I mean? They can't stay like that. They can only maintain that look for sometimes a few hours, let alone a couple uh, uh, weeks and all fucking year. That's ridiculous. Yeah, not. You yeah, know what I mean? They don't, even, even racehorses don't do that. And they have a long racing season. But they ain't peaked every race. You know, right. that's why you get such a difference in times. You know, they, they, they two weeks before they might have done a, you know, mile and a quarter and, and 212. And, uh, you know, two weeks later, they do a mile a quarter and 230. You know, same horses racing against each other. But it's just it's just, you know, with the peak, you know, it's it's kind of elusive. A lot of people don't understand it. It takes time to to, to recognize it and know what it is and how to get that that dog there. And for me, there's two peaks. There's a physical peak and a mental peak. Physical peak was one week before the show. And that last week is where the, the mental peak comes in, getting them ready. And it don't last. And, and when you see, especially like Graham was saying, you got a 12-week keep. That's a long fucking time. And what some people didn't realize is them dogs peak way early, a week, two weeks. It could be a month before. They kept them on the program. The dog will do the work, but if you ain't seen them going stale or you ain't seen them running hot, you know, sooner than they normally would, you know, they passed it. And once you pass it, there ain't a whole lot you can do about it, you know. And, and that's why a lot of times, you know, people will see a dog perform and the performance ain't that good. They'll run hot quick. Off the chain, they didn't run hot. They go 30, 40, whatever. But, but you condition them where they're supposed to look better and they run hot 10, 15 minutes, and they're done. Generally, it's because, you know, two things. You either didn't rest them enough or you passed the peak, you missed it, and, and they're way – they're gone by is what is what horse racing guys, the term they use. You know, they yep, I was trying peak. to think of what the horse guys called it. That's it. They go on yep. by. Yep. You got to go in the rest and recovery mode. Just go on and yep. pay that forfeit or fucking yep. get your ass handed to you. Yeah, yeah. And, you know – uh if if you don't know what it is, I just suggest you do, you know, condition more dogs and, and get an eye for it. You know, when when you see them, when you see them do doing their workouts, and, and generally what happens, you know, they'll they'll when you start they'll they'll run hot at a certain point. You keep working them, they'll recoup on the fly, you know, and then then after the workout's done, it takes them a certain amount of time to cool down, and and as you continue that program, in the beginning that that time it takes them to run hot, it, it goes longer. It takes longer where it might have been 10, 15 minutes before. Now, you know, later on, six weeks later, it takes them a half hour before they do that. And after the workout, it might have taken them five, 10 minutes to cool down where, you know, now it only takes them a couple of minutes. You know, that, that's yeah, how they, I, the roles reverse. Like at exa first, exactly. You fucking. More cooling off with less work, but you get at the end, it's more work, less cooling off. And That's a lot right. of the times when you do it right, your dog does recover on his feet. Yep. So you got to be real mindful of, you know, at what point did it recover. So in real time, when you get there to the show, you can say, okay, we 30 minutes in, you know, he fucking going to go for his second win now. So hopefully, yep. you know, he don't take too much. Before you can get a second win. Now a second win, come back, you know, two minutes, yep. you in the game. <laughs> yep. But if it takes you five minutes, you know, you can get bit down. Yep. Yep. It's like that. And, and it just takes experience to to see it, to do it and see it. And and uh a lot of people, you know, they'll 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 they'll, they'll think, well, it was the food, well, it was the, the ride, something fucked them up. No, you pass his peak three days before and he ain't the same. You know, if you if you're coming up to the peak, is a lot better than 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 passing it and going down. Yeah. You know, so sometimes you're a little throat. bit. Sometimes you're a little bit early. You know. Sometimes you know the best situation is be right on fucking time, and and you know that if you know your dog, you know when you're right on time, and you're gonna be very hard to to to, to get beat that way. But if you if you 
coming up or you going down, then, then you might have a situation. And hopefully your dog will make up for it. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But that, that's any, any athlete has to understand that. Any trainer has to know what, what peaking is and, and uh, uh, get it right, you know. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right, man, why don't you go ahead and give us a disclaimer, man? Uh, hold on. There was a question that I seen in the chat I wanted to answer real quick. It was a okay. good one. Let's go back up to it. <laughs> I remember what he said. I might be up too far, but he he asked uh, when going for a scratch to continue, do you get you know water in the sponge or do you just go? And I say whatever you agree to prior is in place. So if you agree to sponges and all that shit, then yeah, you know sponge it up. But if no sponges at all, then that's just what it is. You know, all that shit is depending on what you agree beforehand. You know, before even the forfeit was fucking put down, you go over the rules of what you want. You know, you give and take like that. It was another yeah. one too. It was a good yeah. one. Yeah, that oh, should all be, yeah. that should all be played, played out beforehand. You know, yeah. Because so yeah, the rules are the same knew. for both. Whatever you agree on, the rules are the same for both. And, yep. And, you know. Uh, if there's any discrepancy, that just means you didn't talk about it beforehand. Yeah, so you get water in. Yeah, he has a scratch to continue. Comes with water in the count or no water, no count. If you backyard boogie in it, you know, then there's no water, none of that shit. But yeah, you still get you still get your your time in the corner and all of that shit. Those rules is put into place for if a dog want to quit. You know, a lot of people say all oh, that shit is cruel and inhumane, but those rules keep a dog from, you know, the old style, leave them down type shit. You know, you see your dog don't want to continue when you take him back to the corner. It's over. He don't got to take no unnecessary damage. You know, you just go home. Motherfucker, exactly. that shit quit. He carried out. That's what the rules is in place for, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh uh, Valley Boys, if you still in here, is you in Cali, bro? Ain't no beef or nothing. I think you the one who helped me out on getting the pet uh, straightened out. That's why I was asking you, bro. If so, just drop it in the chat or whatever. You know, I got a big old salute for you for that if that's you. From Northern Cali. And uh, one more, uh, Mr. Higgs. Yeah, I hit you up, bro. Uh, if the dog good, I'll give him back to you when we done. You know, <laughs> I ain't tripping on that. Since you're going to be, you know, bless me with one, I'll bless him back to you. You ain't got to let me breathe to him or none of that. Just let me play with him. <laughs> But uh, none of this shit, man, is intended for any illegal purposes. Don't be using that shit for that either, man. You get caught lacking, that's on you. Man, you already know it's the weekend, so don't be out there fucking around, man. You know? Keep your shit on man time and only hang around other men who on man time. Your life will go a whole lot better. You want your dog registered, hit up schoolboy. He got the best shit ever cracking right now, man, for the low key. So jump on it. It's only $45. Most of you motherfuckers in the chat spent that on the eighth while we was talking. Because I'm finna go <laughs> spend that on the eighth. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So it's well worth it. The shirts too, hit them up, man. The motherfuckers go. I'm about to get a couple of them from them and start rocking them. But in that, man, y'all be good, man. Uh, homework for the weekend, man. Practice to keep. And come back and let me know how your dog looking. Weigh them up tomorrow. Start working them. Come back Friday. Let me know where you at, man. And I start dropping y'all some good old some of my uh little secrets and shit I be using for the keeps. You know how to get the, a faster mouth and all of that. You know I'm the, I'm the man for that. All right, and that man. Shit, salute. Thanks for y'all for tuning in, man. It's always a pleasure chopping it up with y'all. Yes, oh, indeed. Hey, hey, don't don't leave out yet because uh, I want to ask you some. Uh, all right, all right, y'all. See y'all next week. Thank y'all for tuning in. Smash the like button on the way out. We up out of here, y'all. Peace.